right, so welcome to our first BPI audit. We're going to be doing this every single month, and essentially the goal of the BPI audit is actually to make this a public company and make it more obvious that all the transparency, I'll make my, my screen a little bit bigger, where all the transparency between the financials and everything else is very transparent to not only the public but the agents. When I was at a lot of companies before, real estate included, Nobody knew what any of the ratios were, what the financials were, what our market share was, what our profit was, what our profit percentage was, what our net revenue was. We had no idea. We're kind of just going to work and not seeing the bigger picture with the company. So there's two reasons that I'm actually doing this. I've, I've had this vision for years where I really wanted to at least disclose all of the leads, the lead conversions, the lead ratios, the converted to deals, our deals, our contracts signed, all those information from leads to deals to financials, and the financials would be what's our profit, and essentially just open it up. There's a multitude of reasons. The first is it's good for recruiting, so agents feel like they're actually a part of something. That's the first thing. The second thing is actually when it comes to the public, the public could say, you know what, I like this. They're transparent, they're disclosing everything, and if they're doing this to the public about things like leads and their challenges and their opportunities and, and where they see themselves in say 10 years, which is goals, it's good for everybody. And it also kind of makes a discussion in other companies more apparent and obvious when it comes to private companies. In public companies, most of it is obviously out there, everybody understands it, but when it comes to private companies, nobody understands anything that's going on. So essentially, we're going to go through this, and obviously when there's any questions or anything else, we're going to be moving it on. The first thing that we really wanted to talk about, the introduction, was why we're in business and what we're building. So we're in business to become a company that has a repeatable, as I, I don't actually have it here, is a repeatable, scalable business that every single time you have a deal or transaction with us, it's the exact same experience. So whether it's tomorrow or in two years, in two years it's supposed to be better, obviously, because we're improving, but also it's the same rough experience. You get plenty of time, you get plenty of communication, you get plenty of reach outs, you get plenty of emails, texts, calls, you understand where the process is going. All these things are gonna be available to the public when it comes to, I'm a buyer, I just put an offer, what are the next steps? I just got an accepted offer, what are the next steps? I'm putting in a purchase application, what are the next steps? I'm about to do a board, board application, what are the next steps? I'm about to do a board interview, what are the next steps? I'm about to close, what are the next steps? And essentially have the entire process from the beginning to end. Those are what the top teams do. So we essentially want to reimagine the experience of buying and selling real estate. And it's simplistic in the wording, but it's very challenging behind the scenes, as we'll talk about with Salesforce and, and bringing in the financials and kind of having a big hub of everything. And the motto is that we don't want to be like every other firm, which is we bring on a bunch of agents, we hire a bunch of agents, we have thousands of agents. We don't want to become that. Essentially, we want to become a Navy SEAL, as Tom Ferry, who's a real estate coach, talks about, is that you want to be a Navy SEAL style company, where the company essentially is saying, hey, listen, we are in the business to, do, to serving at the highest level we can, and we're not bringing on just anyone. We're bringing on only those that are essentially really making life a lot easier for the client. And life easier for the client is not only good for the client, but it also kind of reimagines the industry. And the industry, to be honest, it kind of needs some help. So we're in the business to and let, let me go into the building. What are we building? We're building essentially a company that is training leads and service-based where all those are buzzwords, okay? Leads are essentially people that have raised their hand or at least agents that come aboard and they understand what to do. How do I generate leads? How do I generate business? When I come to the office, what do I do? So that's the leads. The training is the ongoing training, which is something that I just posted on my personal U YouTube channel about what do we, what did I learn the last week? What are the top bullet points that I learned the last week that we can utilize in real estate? So if you want to subscribe, that's on my personal YouTube channel. And we go, I'm going to be doing that every single Tuesday. When it comes to the service, the service is for the client. 
okay? The, the, the clients are, the number one complaint from sellers is that they don't hear from their agent. So essentially, this is what we want to talk about. We start every call, or at least I do, every single call with my coaching client, and we say, okay, what are the wins? The wins for this past month, and we're going to be doing this every single month, we're going to be doing an audit every single month. Each month is going to be totally different. The wins this month is that we have notifications for birthdays, leases due, and closings. This is so simplistic in the CRM to understand when it's someone's birthday, when, when, when is their closing anniversary, when is their lease due, what is their current lease uh, price, and are they going to re-sign it? And if they're going to re-sign it, what is their new tasks? Congratulations to the landlord. Congratulations to the tenant. Here's the document you need to sign to make sure that we extend the lease and it's legally bounding, binding. Number two is we have a transaction checklist that we essentially will automate. The transa transaction checklist is a huge document. And it's a lot of steps. And I'm actually going to be doing a little bit better job of kind of organizing it this weekend. But it's essentially, when I get a listing, what do I do? When I get a buyer, what do I do? We have an accepted offer, what do I do? I have a closing that's scheduled, what do I do? S simplistic things is like make sure the owner brings all keys. Front door, top lock, key fob for any outdoor or amenities, you know, mailbox key. These are things that people have forgotten at the closing. I forgot the keys, or it's with the doorman, or I don't have the key fob, or I don't have the amenities fob, or, or, or. That's a checklist, and that's unprofessional if we are not actually doing that on a consistent basis. Because those are the basics. You're getting paid a huge amount of money. All the real estate agents are getting paid a huge amount of money. And if they don't have the basics dialed in, there's no point in trusting them in bigger transactions. We have um, Salesforce CRM, which is a gigantic CRM. And essentially, this, the CRM is a good tool, but unless there's good data in there, it doesn't matter. So we added 800 buildings, 900 units in Salesforce with all the information, all the links. What are the size of the bedrooms? What are the size of the baths? How many square feet? What's the last closing price? Who owns it? All of these things are in our Salesforce, so we understand. And this isn't every single owner, but these are people we've worked with. This is thousands of people that are in our database that own apartments. So we had to understand that the data was clean. It was good. So we hired someone to go in and literally do all 1,700 of those uh, buildings and units. We created the first version of client care. So the client care is essentially what we're going to be doing every single month or week or year when it comes to clients. Uh, we have not been good at that. Admittedly, awful, terrible. You know, we close on an apartment, but our focus was like, where do we generate new business instead of why don't we just love on our clients? Why don't we just send them a, a handwritten thank you? Thank you for your business. Happy birthday. Um, happy July 4th. You know, happy holidays. Whatever the case is, is that we've essentially not been good at all with that. And that is one of the biggest priorities. So we've already implemented an area that we can track and label when we reach out, how often we reach out, what's the method we reach out and what's the reason we reach out and then we can run reports on that and find out at the end of the year, how good did we do? What's our annual report? Track and measure, uh, report, uh, report dials. So every single day we make a certain amount of dials. I just got off the, the phone with my uh, coach and he said that uh, we're not making enough dials, we're not making enough conversations. So that's something that I have to get on top of, the first thing is. The second thing is when we actually start reporting on it, the good thing is that we have to understand that reporting but also measuring is important. So we got that going. When it comes to clients in Salesforce, this is a huge opportunity that we're, we're really going to be focusing on. Um, when it comes to uh, dialing in a better system to reaching out, communication, texting, calling, voicemail drops, um, automation, things like that. So we've improved a bunch of places where we call it moments, sign contract, congratulations, here are the next steps, kind of already discussed that. Uh, what's nice about all of this is that we've essentially moved into the direction of when you work with us, you know exactly what you're going to get and you know exactly the next steps. So the next area is themes. We're going to have a monthly theme and we're essentially going to be talking about what do we need to work on that month and what do we need to essentially push out. So this month is we have to call and dial, not call, but we have to dial with purpose. 
and the yearly is to charge the storm. The high level goals are pay down the business debt, which is a lot. Leads and client transaction system is done. This is the high level priority, priority, priority. In other words, when something happens, this happens next. When this happens, it's an if then algorithm. Hit 95% pro prospecting and tracking. So in other words, 95% of the working days we are prospecting and tracking. Uh, medium level is consistent social posting. Presentation is down. Email marketing and monthly newsletter. These are the areas that we're essentially going to be going over. And, you know, the engine is these four things. And the four things are training, culture, finances, marketing. If you don't have one of these things, you can't be running at a high level. It's just impossible. So every single month, the engine of BPI is these four things. And these four things, to be honest, are going to be, here's the opportunity, here's the challenges. How do we get 1% better? 1% better is what do we need to start doing, stop doing, continue doing, and then we have a SWOT analysis. Every single month we're going to be going over this. Obviously, this is the introduction to, to the audit. This month we're going to be auditing. Obviously, we're halfway through the month, but we're going to be going through this every single month and auditing ourselves. So this is the initial call or the initial audit. And though it was brief and short, I didn't want to take up too much of everyone's time. And listen, at the end of the day, the opportunity is that it's probably going to be one of the better years of real estate when it comes to market share. A huge amount of people are going to be leaving the industry. A lot of people are going to be passing up clients, not working full days. They're going to be depressed um, about the market, about the stock market, about the real estate market. Uh, uh, not enough sellers, not enough buyers, not enough inventory. The list is endless. It's easy to fall down that rabbit hole. Uh, here at BPI, we want to take inventory and say, listen, Here's the solutions here. We're solution oriented. This is what we want to do. We want to make sure that we're on top of it. And here's how we know we're on top of it. So I do appreciate it. You know, I think one of the, the, the closing remarks that I want to have is that if you have any say ideas of how to make us better is why we're doing this publicly. Okay. We're not doing this to ensure that some people are in the know, which is internal and no one else is in the know. It's, a, it's for everyone. It's for the public. It's for our clients. It's for our internals, which are the people we work with. You know, we have an accountant we just brought on. We have a new Salesforce developer we just brought on. We have an, an additional VA we just brought on. So we're expanding. We're, we're not slowing down. And we want to grab more market share based not on brute force, but by loving on past clients and understanding that we have a good from introduction to closing process. That's vital. And if you don't have that, then you're not going to be in business for very long because there's plenty of agents that have very good from introduction to closing process. They know what to do. Everything is automated. Everything is kind of just on this, this nice loop of it's just a well-run machine. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. I look forward to working with you. I look forward to the future of auditing BPI. And as always, any questions, we'll talk.